Welcome to the NREMT, EMT exam practice test. Our topic today is medical, obstetrics, and gynecology. Use the link in the description to download the app on the App Store for free practice tests. Number 1. When responding to an infectious emergency, which of the following must an EMT do first? A. Support and maintain ABCs. B. Obtain sample and OPQRST histories. C. Place the patient in a position of comfort and treat for dehydration. D. Put on personal protective equipment. The correct answer is D. Put on personal protective equipment. Explanation. Choices A, B and C are procedures that an EMT must perform during an infectious emergency response. However, the EMT must always protect themselves first with protective equipment in order to prevent the disease from spreading, making choice D the correct answer. Number 2. Difficulty speaking, loss of speech, difficulty understanding speech, and weakness or numbness in the face and limbs, particularly on one side of the body, are signs and symptoms of which of the following emergencies? A. Seizures. B. Hypothyroidism. C. Stroke. D. Cushing's syndrome. The correct answer is C. Stroke. Explanation. Stroke is caused by a loss of brain function, leading to difficulty speaking, loss of speech, difficulty understanding speech, and weakness or numbness in the face and limbs, particularly on one side of the body. Signs and symptoms of seizures include convulsions and muscle rigidity, so choice A is false. Hypothyroidism is characterized by fatigue, lethargy, slow mental function, and waxy appearance, making choice B is incorrect. Cushing's syndrome is associated with weight gain and fat accumulation. Therefore, choice D is false. Number 3. Which of the following hormones is primarily responsible for regulating metabolism? A. Insulin. B. Testosterone. C. Adrenaline. D. Thyroid hormone. The correct answer is D. Thyroid hormone. Explanation. Thyroid hormone is responsible for regulating metabolism, so choice D is the correct answer. Insulin is involved in glucose uptake into tissues, testosterone is for sperm production and secondary male sexual characteristics, and adrenaline is responsible for mechanisms in the flight or fight response, making the other choices incorrect. Number 4. A type of abdominal pain caused by stimulation of an organ's nerve fibers due to stretching of the organ's wall is referred to as which of the following? A. Visceral pain. B. Parietal pain. C. Referred pain. D. Somatic pain. The correct answer is A. Visceral pain. Explanation. Visceral pain is caused by stimulation to an organ's nerve fibers due to stretching of the organ's wall, so choice A is the correct answer. Parietal pain is caused by irritation to parietal peritoneal wall, making choice B false. Referred pain occurs when a radiating pain is felt elsewhere than the point of origin, so choice C is also false. Somatic pain, which was not discussed, is caused by injury to the bones, muscles, skin, and connective tissues, making D incorrect as well. Number 5. What is the first step in performing an abdominal exam? A. Asking the patient about the location of the pain. B. Palpating the patient's abdomen. C. Inspecting the abdomen for swelling. D. Placing the patient in a supin position. The correct answer is D. Placing the patient in a supine position. Explanation. To help determine the location and cause of pain, an EMT should perform an abdominal exam as outlined in the following procedure. First, lay the patient in a supine position, facing up. Then, ask him or her to identify the location of the pain. After that palpate the abdomen by pressing on the unaffected areas first. Finally, inspect the abdomen for distension, swelling, surgical scars, or changes in skin color. Number 6. Which of the following STDs, if left untreated, is the most common cause of pelvic inflammatory disease? A. Bacterial vaginosis. B. Genital herpes. C. Chlamydia. D. Gonorrhea. The correct answer is C. Chlamydia. Explanation. 
While bacterial vaginosis and gonorrhea may lead to PID, chlamydia causes the most cases of PID, making choice C the correct answer. Genital herpes doesn't involve the cervix or uterus, where PID occurs, so choices A, B and C are incorrect. Number 7. How much epinephrine is needed for an adult patient? A. 0.15 mg. B. 0.30 mg. C. 0.45 mg. D. 0.66 mg. The correct answer is B. 0.30 mg. Explanation. Epinephrine reverses the effects of severe allergic reactions by causing vasoconstriction and hypertension. The appropriate dosage of epinephrine are 0.15 mg for children under 66 pounds and 0.30 mg for adults. Number 8. A 40-year-old female patient presents with jaundice, yellowing of her eyes, and abdominal pain. After supporting and maintaining her ABCs and obtaining her sample and OPEQ URST histories, she confesses to the EMT that she's an IV heroin user. Which of the following diseases does the patient most likely have? A. Hepatitis A. B. Hepatitis B. C. Hepatitis C. D. Hepatitis D. The correct answer is B. Hepatitis B. Explanation. All the respective signs and symptoms are characteristic of hepatitis, however, hepatitis B is specifically caused by sharing needles. As the patient is an IV heroin user, the correct answer is hepatitis B, hepatitis A, C, and D have different modes of transmission. Number 9. Which are non-filterable components? A. Albumins. B. Nitrogenous waste. C. Nutrients. D. Water. The correct answer is A. Albumins. Explanation. Blood contains filterable and non-filterable components. Filterable components are water, nitrogenous waste, and nutrients. Non-filterable components, blood cells, platelets, and albumins, leave the glomerulus through the efferent arteriole, arteriole traveling away from the glomerulus. Number 10. Which of the following signs and symptoms are characteristic of Cushing's syndrome? A. Moon-shaped face, weight gain, and fat accumulation in the back and shoulders. B. Extremely high fever, 106 Fahrenheit or above, hypotension, and goiter. C. Hyperkalemia, darkening of the skin, and hypoglycemia. D. Deep and labored breathing, vomiting, abdominal pain, and unconsciousness. The correct answer is A. Moon-shaped face, weight gain, and fat accumulation in the back and shoulders. Explanation. Cushing syndrome occurs when the adrenal gland has been too active, producing too much cortisol, which stimulates the pituitary gland to produce too much adrenocorticotropic hormone, ACTH. A patient with Cushing's may present with a moon-faced appearance, weight gain, and fat accumulation on the upper back, called a buffalo hump, as well as in the shoulders under the abdomen, called a supraclavicular fat pad, making choice A the correct answer. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for updated videos every week.